tend to think of our experience as just sort of happening to us instantaneously. So, I, you know, I don't think when I talk to someone that they are across the room and therefore there's a certain amount of time that it takes for me to hear what they're saying. Uh, we just think that everything happens in real time. Uh, but, you know, the fact is that we perceive the world through this organ, the brain, um, and it, it works a lot kind of like a, like a telegraph. Um, so if you were to send a message to somebody with a telegraph uh, and you start tapping out your, your message, they're not going to get the message immediately. It's going to take time for all those dots and dashes to make their way down the wire and get to the other end. Um, we have wiring in our own brains. We have neurons, which work a lot like telegraph wires in some ways. They, they actually use kind of a biological set of dots and dashes. They have little spikes of voltage that we use to process information. So, you know, if I see something, it takes a while for it to get from my eye into my brain, and then it takes a while for it to spread to different parts of the brain, and then for that information to get integrated in lots of different ways. Um, uh, the way that you can think about this really vividly was um, was brought home to me once when I was talking to a neuroscientist named uh, Michael Gazaniga. And he just, basically all he did was he took his finger and he stuck it on his nose. And he said, you know, what's interesting is that um, you feel your finger touching your nose and you feel your nose touching your finger at the same time. But the fact is that the signal from your fingertip had a lot longer to go than the signal from your nose. And yet, they got to your brain and they felt like it was happening at the same time. So, um, so, so your thoughts have this speed and your brain has to, to, your brain has to, to, to deal with that, that speed, has to deal with that delay. Now, you might think, well, you know, we should just have brains that, that work as fast as possible. So we should just have, you know, fast, fast neurons uh, and just to speed everything up. You know, because because time is money. Because because you know your survival might depend on a fast signal. There's a problem though, is that uh, speeding up these signals uh, doesn't come for free. So um, one strategy that that we have evolved for fast thought, as it were, is to insulate our neurons. And uh, this is uh, actually, you know, something that is, is used a lot in engineering. I mean, if you don't want a signal to dissipate out of, out of a wire, you, you want to insulate it. Uh, we insulate our neurons with um, sort of fatty molecules, uh, like myelin. Um, another thing you can do is you can actually take another trick that telegraph uh, engineers first developed, which is to make your neurons thick. So signals will go through a fast wire, uh, I'm sorry, Signals will go through a fat wire quickly, faster than a thinner wire. Now, the problem is that uh, insulating your neurons and making them fat is a big cost. It takes a lot of energy to do that, energy you could be using for other things. And not only that, but you know, your brain is a, is a pretty tightly packed place. If you were to you know, double or triple the width of your neurons, your head might not be able to fit through a doorway. So. Uh, Evolution has come up with these wonderful optimizing trade-offs. Um, our, our signals work quickly in some neurons and slower in others. We've sort of found this, this nice balance to, to speed it up as fast as possible without making the cost too, too high. And the fact is that you know, when I put my nose, touch my finger to my nose, um, I actually don't want the signal from my nose to go too fast. I actually want the timing to uh, make everything seem to be happening at once. So actually, sometimes you need to slow thought down a little bit in order for the world to make any sense. 